I think film yeah. and asking questions and for interviews and stuff is really cool. I'm really interested. I want to learn more about other people because it gives me the opportunity to like help people. I don't know, I just, it seems cool. Yeah. Now it's recording. to detach this camera. Um. <laughs> I love this community and everything, but it's not like you pick this community on choice. You kind of like either end up here because you want to help or because one of your family members was an addiction. Nice. I just want adults to understand kids because sometimes they don't and it makes them feel bad about themselves. Oh my god, what is that? They're just telling you not to use drugs, but they're not giving you tools. <laughs> Instead of just saying drugs are bad, like actually tell them what they can do to you and where you can end up. You should always listen to a child. You, know, you should just listen to them because it's just important to listen to what other people have to say. The interview families from across the country who have experienced And we heard of We're excited to uh, make your own movie this week. Quiet on the set! Check, check. Take one. Ow! <laughs> Definitely. Do you like your family? Yes, I love my family. Oh. What are you most liking except you two? Uh, chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give these out all week and we're going to bring them to the summit and give them out. We could keep these ones for camp. Like oh, if, yeah. if you forget your toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should do that yeah. instead. All right. So every Ziploc bag gets a toothbrush and some extra toothpaste and a deodorant and a soap. Yeah. Are you ready for this week? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't know? I'm scared. What are you scared about? Talking. Talking at the summit? Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna be on the panel, right? Yeah. I'm nervous excited. I can be nervous excited. Nervous excited. Nervous and excited. That is my new favorite word. People come here if like if they're trying to work on themselves. Do we need a like we place where I could be myself. Sometimes when you're in a place where your friends are and you are just trying to make friends and everything, it's hard. Sometimes your personality isn't from everyone, so you would have to change your opinion about everything. I think recovery, it's a place where you can just be yourself and it feels nice and feel, it feels good and it feels right. It's definitely right. You could just like raise your hand. Um, and so we'll start with Do you know anybody who is in recovery from substance use? Do Oh wow, I didn't even have to do that many. Do you know anybody who has passed away from an overdose? Do you know any youth who have used substances? And I just wanted to have that moment with you all to show each other as we go into this day together that we've all been impacted one way or another, whether it's ourselves or our family members or somebody in our community that we know. And that's super powerful as we go into this work together. All right, wanna come in for a 
Come in. Uh, well, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, two, three. three. Team. 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 All right, so all bills start with an idea. The first thing that I need to know from you is what do you want to have as the content of the bill? What's in our bill? What do you guys see in school, right? You're dealing with this. You've, you all raised your hand earlier that you saw people who have been dealing with this. Are you, are you seeing this among people even your age in your schools? Yeah. yeah. What do you think we as adults should be doing differently? Listening to the children, instead of just like getting your own opinion and going off and not listening to them. Mm -hmm. Hearing the people yeah. yeah. Have you all had dare or something like that? Yeah. 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 In our elementary school. It was it was informative. It helped, but like if you have somebody going through that, like the, it doesn't give you the tools to like help them. Have anyone in this space been around an overdose for opiates? At the time, did you know how or have access to Narcan? No. Do you no. even know what Narcan is? I have no idea what it is. Uh, probably when I was like about 12, uh, my mother had done drugs and she overdosed seven times in one year. But she's still with me, luckily. <laughs> but is she doing I, better? What? Is she doing better? Yep. Oh yeah, but yeah. Thank you, Joseph, for sharing that with us. One of the things that you could potentially do is put forward a bill that re would require all Maine students, like they learn about CPR, to learn about how to properly administer Narcan. Say your name, where you're from, and whether you're speaking in favor of the bill or in opposition to the bill, and then what your testimony is. So, my name is Stephen McKenney. Uh, I'm from Augusta, and I am in favor of this bill. No one wants to walk in on their family member on their on the floor overdosed and not know what to do about it. My um, ex stepbrother overdosed on Percocet, and I was I think eight or nine when it happened, and I had no clue what to do because schools didn't teach don't teach it. I. It took the ambulance 45 minutes to get to my house, and thankfully he survived. But at that point, it was terrifying for me. But I, yes, I feel like a lot of people would be very comfortable learning about that and feel safer learning about it because they just know what to do in those kind of situations. Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition to the legislation? Why not? So just state your name, where you're from, and what you're for against the bill, and then your testimony. Um, my name is Eamon, and I'm from Augusta, Maine, and I am against the bill. I, I think I will speak for all the moms who don't want their children to know what drugs are so they don't use them. The moms will take out their children and teach them at home, and so the schools will not have much money. Thank you for sharing that point of view. It's an important consideration. Anyone, anything else? No. Oh, good job. <laughs> this is a make-believe bill, but this process is real and it's accessible to you. Whether you're five or 50 or 100, it doesn't matter. Anybody can come to the legislature and testify on a bill. So, congratulations, your bill has had initial support but there is still a long ways to go before it becomes law. All right, so, uh, so this is the house. Yes. Yeah. Wait, we're meeting the governor. Um, we're gonna meet the governor. Yeah,
I love it. Because, because. What do you love about it? I can make s'mores and hot dogs. My favorite part. And I also like doing silly faces in the fire. Nice. <laughs> that does sound fun. I'm going to be telling my story at the Opioid Summit tomorrow. I'm nervous to speak. I'm also excited for it, so it's like mixed emotions for me. Like if I mess up, do I have to start over or just just forget about me messing up? I feel like they're gonna laugh at me or something. Speaking in front of people is just not my gig. I get so nervous and then everything just goes blank. We're in nature, there's not like a whole bunch of craziness around. And it's kind of just like it's a place like relaxed before a lot of stress is going to be put on you. An adjective I would use to describe myself is. I describe myself as the night, like nighttime. I'm just really happy I get to be with my mom because if she didn't stop, I don't think I'd have the opportunity to be here at camp and do a bunch of other fun stuff. I always thought my mom was fine, but she was usually sad. I'm just really happy it didn't change how much she loved me and my brother. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a graphic designer for like posters and like prints, different stuff. Because usually post posters about stuff are boring. They just it's just black and white. But what if we make it more fun? Kids are bored. That's why they go out and use because they are bored or they're sad. So maybe we can do stuff that's fun and make them happy, like doing trips to campgrounds or hotels or parties. Prevention to adults usually is like, don't do drugs or don't do this, or, don't do that. But prevention to me is doing fun things. Let's say this was on a poster. Don't do drugs because there's so many other things fun things that you can do. Over the course of the last week, young people across the state have been engaging in a week of action, including documenting their experience with voices in the movie. Many of the youth have been interviewing each other for the film and spending time behind the camera themselves. All of this was leading up to this moment when young people will share their stories and experiences growing up in recovery and harm reduction communities in Maine. Welcome on this beautiful Maine uh, morning. The theme this morning and this afternoon today is community, connection, and compassion. We're the result of pharmaceutical opioids. In fact, many of those investigate and prosecute um, illegal over-prescribing, illegal diversion and prescribing in Maine. And I have great admiration for all of you who work in the field to try to help them. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, and he said, you know what, thanks for, you know, thanks for taking the time to work with me. And I just thank him. Okay, well done. Okay, I'm done. Oh. Oh. I put on sunscreen. Oh. 
<laughs> now we have more breathing room. Yep. with a K. Stand up if you're here. <laughs> Stand up if you have chocolate. Stand up if your name is Alex. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for joining us at this panel discussion with young people who are members of the recovery and harm reduction community either in recovery themselves, loving someone in recovery, having lost someone to overdose, or as the young people practicing harm reduction, who are leading work in their communities to support other young people impacted by substance use. Steven, can you talk about your experience going to the state house and giving testimony on our mock bill? It was the first time I've ever been to a state house. We had a meeting with uh, Governor Mills where she signed off on the mock bill and gave some thoughts on it, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Jalen, could you talk about why you believe that young people should be trained in, in, and have na access to Narcan? I've always believed that everyone should be able to access supplies like needles and Narcan. They are so important because if you're just walking and you see somebody overdose, you have the chance to save their life. Lily, you've spent the entire week learning about interviewing and filming. Can you talk about your experience with filming? My experience learning to film was when we were doing interviews. I learned how to use the camera and I asked questions. It helped me get ready for the panel today. Esperanza, your uncle is now in recovery, but he wasn't always. How did that affect you and your family? Before my uncle was in recovery, it was like a sickness or a disease that not only affected him, but also me and my family. Addiction doesn't only affect the person in addiction, but it also affects the person's family and friends. I did not choose to be a part of the recovery community, but I did have a choice to embrace the fact that I have an uncle in addiction. So let's not look down on people in recovery. The more you help, the less people in addiction there will be in the world. Sam, this week some of the team got to come up to Matthias to learn about the work you all are doing up there. Can you t tell us the story about how the basketball hoop got there and why? Um, one of my mom's friends offered to give her a basketball hoop to give me and we were gonna put it in our driveway, but I thought that we should put it where everyone could use it. So he just... <laughs> My mom has been sober for 20 years, in my opinion. My mom didn't quit using drugs, and I'd probably not be the person I am today, and I don't even know if I'd be here. So thank you, Mom, for pushing me through the sickness. Thank you for making me the person I am today. I love you, Mom. You've shown me that anything is possible. You mean the world to me, and I'm so, so grateful. Next up, we have Maggie. Maggie, can you tell us a about the hikes that you have been coordinating and why it's important for young people to speak up about their, their experiences. Um, I have helped organize two hikes in Washington County. The first one was a four and a half mile hike along the Machias River and over 10 community members and youth attended. The second one was a two mile hike at Rokes Bluff State Park and over 25 community members and youth attended. I have been impacted by substance use disorder my mom is in recovery. Um, I have many family members that are still seeking recovery. And my dad recently passed away. And my hope is to be a support for all those who have substance use disorder, along with supporting the people that love them. If I could tell my dad one last thing, it would be that you are loved. Thank you. This concludes our discussion with young people. We hope you took something from our event. Without you all, this would not have been possible.
Why did the cow cross the street? Cause to get to the movies. Did you break up with someone? Did I break up with someone? <laughs> um, I have in the past. <laughs> what was their name? Could you? This is the most weirdest interview. Oh. No, we're not doing such things. Great job. Do you have any questions about me that aren't about ex-girlfriends? <laughs> <laughs> Ash, any of you take one? Nice. Take one. Oh, really good. What well, you got to come? Yeah. I can't. Look at everybody. Can you come? Why did the tree cross the street? Because its roots hasn't had enough power. Um, Wait, I need you to explain that one to me. <laughs> Will you explain that one to me? <laughs>